Welcome, I'm Bill Wake. We're here working on a financial planning app that helps you in medium to long term. And one of the things we've done this week is we try and improve some of our design and we have some, some friction because we have to deal with the persistence. And we're in the middle of trying to update dates. They used to have individual dates, a first and a last, and now we want a range. And something didn't quite update. So let's see what we're up against. All right, so this is, um, I just ran and set, um, set myself to the right directory, and we're looking at SS1 here. Um, what you should notice is we have first and we have last, but we don't have dates. So that means our transformation did not take. Um, and I think I know what it is. We updated four out of five to use the date field and left the last one off. So let's look at that. Okay, so I copied this code up here. Okay, so they, uh, um, we had to switch the type. I mean, we could really just combine this. It won't hurt to set the type to Leia if it's Leia. Okay, but I think what we what we in effect did was anything we'd already converted to dot Leia for its plan type um, was not getting the conversion here. So let's try this again. Okay, so I'm gonna just hit run. Okay, and um, it won't change anything unless we change something here. So let's let's just modify one of these. Okay, we'll update that. Now we'll take the folder. And we'll do the JQ again. Go to the top SS1. Okay. Now we have a dates field and it has first and last. All right, and these balance. Okay, so here's first, here's last, and here's the dates. And we still have the first and last. Somewhere it's last, yeah. Um, because let's let's go to the. I guess it's Leia. Okay, so Leia still has these fields for first and last but now it has the optional date range. And um, that, that way, everybody that accesses dates, um, they can go directly to this dates field. Well, we've got the dates underscore field, but um, now that this is converted, it has both the old way and the new way. So it's kind of a parallel change in effect. They're gonna be consistent with each other, which I think we saw. Well, last was unchanged. First is 2024 Yeah, so um, they are consistent with each other and they will be, you know, I mean, we're just writing out the dates field based on those two, so there's no reason it would change. We don't provide a setter for this. Um, well, this is probably should be private set. Make sure that works. I don't know if there's a test that might play with that. In the long run, we can be private set, but um, next week, well, okay, yeah, there we go. It's, it's probably because of the test. That test won't need to be there next week. Nobody's really using it as a public set. Okay, but we will take, the, take this off 
take these out and delete the corresponding keys, coding keys. Okay, so once we know our customer has run and made one change, now, I don't know, we could, maybe we should, where's plans? I mean, one thing we could do in update is, is do a save. Right away. I don't know. It's like, how much inconvenience do I want to push onto my users? Me and one other. Um, yeah, I don't think I want to make you pay for that at startup. It's slow enough. Um, now, the actual saves don't feel slow to me, so it's probably not a problem, but I think, I think we will leave that bit off. I mean, I could immediately after load, I could call a save on plans. Let's find, uh, is that the Fumi app? Right, initially he loads and then loads, loads the people, loads the plans. Okay. Um, I think that's, I think that's tolerable. Only save if there was a change too. Yeah, yeah, I just don't, I, I don't want to fight it that hard. Um, you know, I think you're going to start it up once or twice in a week. Basically, I'm asking him to start it up make one change and then he doesn't have to do anything else for the week to, to stay synced. I, I think I can, I can request that much. Um, it wouldn't hurt to save it again. Yeah. One extra save per launch is, is probably not bad. And I don't know where save is. Oh, it's going to be at the top level. So it's going to be on content view, I think. Yeah, on change, try save. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave it. I, I keep debating, but... Um, I'll ask that much of Yeah, it would be nice in a way. I mean, if this were a real serious update kind of thing, uh, update mechanism, like we would, we would track a version number. We would probably, probably provide a series of updates in case they missed several versions and stuff like that. Um, when you have such a small audience, then you can get by with with not doing that helpful stuff, and the update mechanism should track what it changed and all that. And we don't we don't do that. I'm not. We could, but uh, it's not worth the effort to me. All right, um, that worked. Okay, good. So, yeah, that was the issue. I guess <laughs> my my title should have been like actually deal with assumptions because that's what we're going to do now. Um, update dates. Okay. Um, what else? Okay, next week we're going to do the cleanup. Delete planned up pool and stream. Um, delete Leia dot first and last. Okay, so let's switch gears. Yeah, I mean, I could. I think the point of it is he's going to make changes. <laughs> um, it, well, yeah, it, it, it would be nice. I just worry about creating these instabilities you know, and that's why I hold back, I guess, because 
now I say the plan was not changed when you load it because we don't want to make any any saves. And if I said it was changed, then that content view would kick in at some point and and mark this changed. It just yeah, it just seems like yeah, that's work we're we're worrisome enough. I mean, we could do it, but <laughs> I'd rather spend the day on on assumptions. So let's let's switch gears and do that. Let's make sure tests do run green. Uh, I mean, it it could be done. It would take us, you know, half an hour or something, an hour, and uh, we only have two and a half hours, and maybe we can squeak in some assumptions before the day ends. Okay. Uh, well, we'll let that finish. Back to to do though. So assumptions. Come on. All right. Create a client of assumptions. Growth. Okay. So what what I mean by this is um, let's let's put an opportunity to put growth on our layers. And. Right, so, oh, I don't know if I can, yeah, that's green, good. Uh, let's, let's look at one. Okay, so what I'm imagining is there's another field that, um, that's called growth, I think. I'm not sure if there's a better name, but, um, this will have a drop down and the drop down will be all your assumptions. Ugh, boy, we have to pass another global around. I, I don't know, that really annoys me. <sighs> really, really annoys me. Like we have to pass people around, but somehow we have to get to the list of assumptions and I don't know, maybe, maybe There's a tension in this because you have you have this global state. There's only one set of assumptions. In in analogy to a field on an object, like you could just put it in the field and let the object get it. I think there's context that we have that's the people, the assumptions, maybe the plans as part of that context. But um, we keep having to pass it around and... I don't know. That just feels awkward. Now, on the other side, it's reflecting a real dependency. I'm saying, you know, because I'm putting this growth field in a layer, which is a kind of a bottom level, well, date and amount and stuff are more bottom level, but it's kind of the bottom level interesting thing. You know, it gets one line in a display. Um, it's it's got a dependency on what are the assumptions. And if it has a dependency, then everything from it to the top has this dependency. Now, in views, we have this notion that you can, you can define a global environment um, for, for your views and then, and then don't pass it down, but specific views can come in and say, hey, I want access to the global environment. Maybe we should keep them in a single global, um, or maybe maybe we pass around a context, you know, and the context has the people and the assumptions, and then those things that need it can get to the context. It's it's annoying to pass around, but but what passing around does is if you look at an object and you say what goes into this object, you know, it's its parameters and fields that it references that come from some historical place, you know, or globals that you go grab out of the global space. Okay. And if grabbing globals means things that depend on those globals don't have a visible connection anymore, if you have to pass the arguments in, then you can see that it's there. So I don't know. We'll, we'll, We'll see. Okay, so let's let's put growth on here, 
and and put an empty drop down. Actually, I think maybe we should feed maybe we should create an initial assumption that's like zero percent um, and let that be the seed assumption and then if you default you can start default to that one um, my I think I better connect my tablet okay there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, so keep him in a global context. Uh, yeah. I mean, it would, it would sort of be saying everybody depends on context, and context means you can go grab them. Now, on the other hand, it's two objects at this point. It's people, and it's, and it's assumptions, and maybe it's fine. All right, but at any rate... Um, no assumption. Actually, it would be zero percent. So flat growth. You know, no growth. Um, and but I'm saying it. Maybe it should be in the list of assumptions. It's not now. Well, I don't know what's in there now. I put in ROI, but I could have a zero percent growth. You know, zero percent flat growth or something like that. Um, that you start the list with. So there's always an initial assumption, which is also somewhat good from an app usability perspective. Like they can see what this thing is doing and they can see the ties that, that are there and stuff. I, I don't know. All right. Um, let's deal with the UI first then. So we're going to, well, okay. I guess we're going to have to put a, put a field in layout that's a growth and the growth is a string and right now it does not get referenced, okay? But the string will be, um, is the implicit name of an assumption. And we'll put an error somewhere if there's, you know, if there's one that doesn't, um, doesn't link to anything. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We could still do a, a, a growth a growth calculation of zero. So I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll, we'll maybe put some UI in, then we'll add this growth and maybe I'll set it to 1%. And then we have to do some finagling because this is meant to be an annual growth rate. And um, since we want to, since we calculate it on a monthly basis, we're going to have to do the 12th root of two if I'm doing things right the 12th root of whatever that rate is, I should say, and, and multiply those 12th roots, you know, times each other and you'll get one. So, um, or you'll get the initial rate, the, the annual rate. Okay. So let's, let's, um, add a growth field to Leia, add a growth field to um, create slash edit view. Okay, I'll forget the name. All right, uh, Leia. Well, it's going to be optional because we don't have them yet. <laughs> um, but the bum 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 bum. Well, this is another opportunity to do an update, I guess. All right, so the dates, the type. Let's add another field. It's the, well, the growth rate. Maybe just growth of type string. Okay, we don't do anything with it, so I don't, I don't think we're gonna do anything with it at the moment. I'm not gonna test it in just cause I want the field there for a view. Okay, but our update, you know, maybe plans, let's get the plans. Okay, we test update children. Did we, we added a test for that amount. No. Did we add a test for the date? Weren't there four tests? Oh, no, four tests are on plan.
Uh, let's get the a plan. Okay, we did check the date got the actual dates object got set. Okay, let's let's check that um hmm I think if there's no growth, what should we do? I don't know if I should allow an empty string. <sighs> that would be a thing. Did, did I make this optional? No. It has to be optional because existing classes don't have it, and so they need to be able to put a nil in when they load it um, from the codable side. So it'll load if it's there, but will be nil if it's not. <laughs> should it, what should it default to? I mean, in the name, the, I guess this is saying we could put that assumption in. Like that could be the name of it. None. None is good. I like to parenthesize it for some reason. None. Okay. All right, and then, and then assumptions. Well, actually, let's call this none. Min zero, max zero, current zero. I don't know if you can, you could break it. I don't have the notion of a read-only assumption. Hmm. All right, but let's let's find out. Oops, I did run. I meant to do tests. <laughs> Okay, and I expect I expect the plans test will fail. Um, here, yeah, uh, um, that would be a good thing to see. I think it'll just. Hmm. No, I don't know. <laughs> I think the size is determined by. Um, the space it's in, so it's big. I don't know. Interesting. Okay, that failure's there. All right, so let's let's make a layout work. But this is this is a little tricky. Okay, so growth. <coughs> the the challenge is it it comes up nil. Okay, so maybe we'll need to do the same thing here. Set dot growth is nil. And we know the layer is there. Okay, let's make sure that's still... Um, yeah, I don't know what it does with the drag button. I don't know if it'll put it in one big dot. That was what I was going to say first, but I could see it doing it the other way too. Just, you know, zero is zero and who cares, but we'll see in a minute. 
Okay, same place should fail. Yeah, okay. Nothing blew up there. All right, good. Um, let's just see what that does, that assumption. I mean, we could add a hard-coded zero one. Okay. Oh, you can't drag. Interesting. Okay. I guess you could still edit it and give yourself a different value, but... Would default be better? I don't know. All right, so let's let's make the plan. Okay, he needs to set the growth. We don't have a constructor that does growth yet. Let's fix that. Name, amount, type. I guess growth can come last. Where am I going to put it? Um, is it here? Nope, one of these. I probably want it after type. I guess it doesn't matter. Growth. Um, Hmm. Let's get assumption up here. Okay, let's let's use this one. Let's make this Well, no, that's kind of unusable. <laughs> Let's go back to Leia. Okay, I'm going to put growth and then, oh, it's a string, so let's put none. If you want the null, all right. Now, the setter. And I think we want that optional. Okay, so we can set it. Self.growth equals growth. Okay. Now, what else? Something else. Okay, so we need it in here. Okay. I don't think those things are affected. All right, so every constructor out there is going to break, but we'll let the compiler tell us. Okay, so preview, we can make up the growth. Find other previews. That's a body. No, that's okay. Um, okay, that's a preview. That is not a preview. Preview. Plan. Okay, and this is where we have to decide. And let's make it nil in our update just to get through the test. And then this one. Let's, let's put a TBD here.
Okay. Um, I don't think we'll have everything. We don't see tests in there, so there's got to be some tests that. Okay. That's a preview. I keep that. Okay. Um. What do we want? I, I guess there's no harm in the test using what will be the default. Okay. Seemed like it was getting a lot of complaints for one line, if that's really the case, but we'll see. Ugh. Let's make. things. I don't like that these things have grown so big. But on the other hand, it's kind of like that's the stuff you need for for our Leia objects. I suppose we could have defaulted it somehow. Hey, Tooks, welcome. New book, gosh. Oh, more of these. Cannot go. See if I can get these in one go.
still missing some. Come on. <laughs> Is that true? Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we want our updater to default this to this, and that's in plan. Okay, so the growth should be, well, if it has it, if it's there, otherwise this. Okay. Bang that growth. I'm gonna fix those line things eventually. These line things. So, oh, I did that offline update Swift syntax package, but we, oh, I guess I also didn't, uh, sorry. Is it Leia that switched? Okay, so we fixed, um, so update always sets them. Added growth to Leia and update always sets it. So now we have a growth and let's, um, let's keep edit Leia view and Leia. Now Leia view too. Okay, and we'll close things to the right. Okay, so let's look at layout view. Um, do I dare, oh, I don't have, I do have a preview. Let's see if this is one of the weeks where the preview just works.
Well, it has a slow build. Okay, well, let's look at it. Um, so this is the view for one, um, a single layer when we show it in that main, main view. Okay, we got the name type, amount, dates. I guess we can fit the growth in there. Hmm. I don't know why I didn't put that in with... I'll fix those while well, this preview is working its life out. Okay, there we go. Oh, I don't want string describing. Okay. Um, I really just want layer.growth. Maybe I should bang. Okay, because we're making sure it's always set. And eventually we will remove Uh, remove the thing that's going off. Oh, that one's okay. I wonder if, I don't know. Do, 
growth none. I don't know. I almost feel like I should leave off that growth thing if... If it's not, if it's not there. Can make growth default to none if the input is nil. Yeah, that's basically what we've done because we, um, where's plan? Uh, I closed it, but um, the update change we made forced growth to be set to none. Um, now maybe, maybe this is a place where the nil is actually better. Hmm. But none, I don't know, it's explicit. Is that good enough? Well, it would probably get us there for now. Um... And this whole, this, this also, the, the formatting could really be better. Um, oh, we missed a minus sign. Okay. You know, if I would really kind of like these things to be lined up more or less in columns, um, I don't know. Everything's saying growth none, growth none, growth none, growth none. Well, let's let's run, and you'll see it in our code. Hmm. I think this is one where I will deploy it and see what what gets said. Like, I don't know, for my own... I could sort of, sort of see having something that's like inflation, you know, inflation rate or just inflation. And most things having that, except maybe... Um, maybe assets have an ROI or something. Or maybe I have two, one's like stocks and one's bonds or something. Um, uh, yeah, I could almost see... I could almost see that... Everybody's saying growth none. That's just boring. But but if it if some of them said inflation, I guess I need to figure out what what my brother really wanted because this is a feature he wanted. Um, I think well he didn't request it to be done with variables per se. He just wanted to be able to say I want to model growth of my assets and growth of inflation and see the impact of those. And so I think you could. I mean I think you could say asset you know, ROI for your assets, you know, just sort of an average. Maybe you split it up if you're really into it and an inflation growth for everything else. Um, and maybe your mortgage doesn't grow. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. I think different things might have different rates depending. Another, another intermediate one would be, um, well... Like, like you could have credit card debt on here and the interest rate is, I don't know what it is even these days, 15, 18%. Um, you know, your house is probably, well, hopefully you bought it when it was 2%, but if you bought it recently, it's probably 7 or 8%. I don't know where it's at quite. 
I know I see ads like, oh, it's only 5.5% if you buy it through uh, the house through us, you know, but, um, but those are going to be different. And hopefully you'll close down your credit card debt quicker. And, and that student loan debt might be in the middle somewhere. Um, other debt. Yeah. I don't know what other debt you might have, but, um, I believe I'll, I'll, let's get it working and then he can decide how, you know, could he just define it by asset class or, um, I don't know, maybe even like the prefix of the name. Like I could give you a matching rule, you know, and you could say asset house. Well, let's say houses grow at 3% and asset credit card grows at 18% and, or no, that's, that's ex liability, I guess. Um, income maybe grows by inflation, you know. Um, yeah, assets often have interest rates, it, um, liabilities too, right? Income and expenses, well, they tend to, they tend to follow inflation more or less. Um, it's kind of what inflation is. Although, you know, your income inflation is somewhat decoupled from your expense inflation. But yeah, I mean, I think, I think I'll just have to let, put the feature in. Let, let's have a conversation. Do you need to have different ones? Would a pattern match on the front help with that? Um, and then you wouldn't have to say growth, 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 growth. Um, yeah, but, but we don't do any growth yet. We just, we just display them. So that's all we've got so far. Let's, um, yeah, now that, I'm not going to worry about that one. I don't know. Those don't bother me as much. This is just annoying. They want you to do this. Oh no, I missed a parent. This can go down here, I think. We'll get rid of that warning. Let's see. Inflation's hard to apply. Yeah. Well, but like you're... you're mortgage you negotiated the more interest rate on that so even if i mean that's what people get sometimes right i mean the the ones who bought it three years ago when they're getting two percent mortgages um you know they don't care that inflation makes new buyers suffer eight percent and you know eight percent thing and house prices are 25 or 50 percent higher whatever they are you know um but the value of your house probably goes up relative to inflation. I mean, you could either talk about the total inflation. Sometimes they break out core inflation versus food and energy. Sometimes they break out housing as a different return. House prices have been going much higher than inflation even. Um, okay. Drilling white space, sure. Um, what else you got? Line length, but I got rid of the other. Okay. Um, so we added, added, no, just say display layer growth rate. Okay. Now, actually applying it. <sighs> okay. Um, Oh, no, we haven't edited yet. Where's edit Leia? There it is. Keep sliding over. All right. So, again, I think I have a preview. No, I don't. Okay. All right. Well, we want growth in there. We got the Leia. Growth name type okay i think the growth goes here and it's required text field 
the name is growth the field is growth and we're not gonna let you put nothing so where's our valid I don't actually have growth yet but I will I just knock on these a little bit each time, I guess. I don't know, the string one I don't want to fuss with just yet. Why? I don't know. Okay, test should pass. Okay, and then let's run it. This editor doesn't like my hard work keyboard. There it goes. Okay. Growth is inflation. Now I've I've picked okay, let's take that out a moment. Yeah, that's good. Update that. Yeah, now oh whoa. Where did that TBD come from? Is that the one I edited? It is, okay. So the growth should be growth. Our field. Keep trying to click that. Maybe that's a sign. Okay, we can edit it. Now, it introduces potential error Oh, I shouldn't edit it. I should pick it off a, a list. Ugh. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Um, okay. Well, this is different than types. Oh, 
that's where I got to face up to being global or not. Well, the view can have it. So yeah, we, we can we can get it out of the environment. Um, do we do that here? Yeah. Okay, let's go to Fumiab. Okay, so we created assumptions. Did we pass it in? We did. Oh, okay, good. Um, edit layer view. So we can just say at environment is it object. Var assumptions of type assumptions. Is that the way to get to it? No. Just environment. Oh, environment, whatever dot self. Okay. I think I have to redundantly say the type. Yeah. Okay. Right. I mean, this is the nice globals. <laughs> they just appear where you want them. Inflation should be applied. Okay. Um, yeah, so assumptions. Hmm. All right, I think I think I'm using this name none too many places. So let's let's define that on assumption. None is none. Right, let's find anybody using this. Text. How about we do the ones that are relevant to assumptions? Name none, and this is okay. Make sure that runs, and then edit layer view.
Now I think I can just make this string. Maybe this is flat. Flat growth. Come on, rename. Oh, I pushed it over. <laughs> uh. Let's try again. All right, well, let's look for assumption dot none. This is flat growth. Okay, and there's a couple others that um, used it directly. Oh, no, maybe I got them all. Okay, we'll run tests. Mostly we add assumption dot flat growth um, names none. Now this growth is a string. I still want growth, excuse me, defaulted to whatever it started with, but he shouldn't be a text field. He should be a picker. And I forget how you do this. I think you got to do a for each picker selection is dollar growth label is growth.
Okay, we got assumptions. I guess we could say for each assumptions do text dollar zero dot name. Assumptions conform to random. Okay. All right. What do we have to add there? It's some stride or something. Oh, no, there's a bunch of stuff. And the associated indices and subsequences imposes no directions or bidirectional class. Yeah, you must conform to stridable or implement index offset. Okay, stridable. Choose a stride type that represents distance implement advanced by and distance to. Stridable provides default implementations on the stride type. Well, I think the stride type, okay, that's just int for us. All right, we need these two. Other date. The stride type for date is int. Okay, that's what we want. Let's put it in and see what we get. Advanced by n gives a date. Result equals self. Oh, it infers that, okay. I don't know if I should be returning an assumption here. this the index 
for your custom type must conform to stridable. D do I just say type element equals or something? The complexity guarantee your custom type. I know I'm not the best at these associated type element. Type alias can be inferred. So I should be able to say type index equals int. Missing argument. That can't be right. It does not conform to bidirectional consumption, collection, and stubs. If I need these here, then missing argument label immutable cocoa array. No, let me let me try putting this up here. Did I misread it? Either the index for your custom type must conform to stridable, or you must implement offset by and distance to. The index type, actually I want to see if int is stridable, right? It's got to be, I think. Stridable. I'm confused by that. Okay, let's pull this back down if it's got to be separate. The, this doesn't... This doesn't seem right. I thought sequence would do it. Oh, he's not a sequence. Let's see our people. Uh, 
Okay, let's do this. Very protocol of assumption. Name, name, make iterator. Okay, let's see if that helps. I think what I did before was something like this. I don't feel like I should have to do that, but... All right, let's see if this works and then we'll talk about it. Oh, now that's, that's promising. If I didn't have this, I'd be all sad. <laughs> um, maybe we just have to delete it. Okay. Let's look at our assumptions. Did we drop ROI? No. Or yes. Okay. Now, hmm, maybe I got to tag them. I think assumption conform to hash. I thought it would just require it to conform to identifiable. So types of the array in the sorted extension, yeah. Okay. Selection inflation is invalid. It does not have an associated tag. Yeah, that's a challenge. Okay, so this one, it defaults it back to none. Do we not persist our assumptions? Oh, we did not persist our assumptions. Jeez. Okay. Well, we have to do that. Oh, interesting. So it says inflation. Let's do this. I guess if I update, I'll get none. No. Do I have to actually select it? Yeah. Okay, so the values we get Hmm. We're pulling the values for the drop down from the assumptions array. So that's no problem. The problem is if I Oh no, I can't do that anymore, can I? Well, no, I can. I could I could put one in and then delete it. Um
Hmm. There's no indication that it's a problem. That's the real challenge. We could just force it back to none. Yeah, that picker thing, we don't want to do that. Every time generate all those results. Okay, I think we could make a rule. It's in the constructor. So I could make a rule that says, let's look up assumptions, make sure that growth is in there. And if it's not, then there's a problem. Now I think, I don't know if we can access assumptions before this thing finishes though. And we can't assign it. Um, what's the tag for this where you put it initializing late? Is, is it finally? No. Um, I wish I could remember the name of that thing. It's not in yet. Boy, all this for a knit really makes you realize how much, how much it's doing. Um, I know I've used this thing. Ugh, it's not a function, it's not a closure. It's not an operator. Those are advanced. Okay. So 
statements. Defer. <laughs> I don't know if I can, can I assign? Let's take our break. I'm just too bundled up in this. All right, seen a few. All right, welcome back. Um, let's see. So I think what I'm trying to get at is this name should be validated before we throw it into a picker. And the only thing that can validate it is the assumptions array. Um, so I don't think I can call it here. assumptions dot and and let's say I call it I, I don't know force or verified like I if I did this and it's a name that's not in there I think assumptions well okay it doesn't have a member verified but And this using this string to couple them is also not the best, but um, it's going to return a string that it promises will be in there. Okay, for now, let's just do this. Make sure it doesn't blow up. Okay. Well, if that works, I don't have to do this. What's that red light amount used before being initialized? That doesn't even make sense. I think it should be assumptions used before being initialized. Okay, so I think I do have to do this. Defer. And then I hope I can do this. that default this to flat growth fix it in the defer clause so it's got the stuff okay so it's it's unfortunate we have to go through this and we had something where it seemed like initializing it like it didn't override it okay so let's let's try again now, the good thing of having no persistence is we get our situation back. The bad thing is we have no persistence. Okay, so... Oh, no. He did not change. Okay, let's, let's just force him. Boom. Okay, yeah. Assumptions may be missing. So we can't access it in there. So we have to move it down. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, yeah, so I think that was from before. Let's see if this builds now. No! Well, here, I think we can just say growth. Oh, yeah. Well, when, this is kind of a lifetime question, when do we get the chance to set this field? Well, if I take this out, does the purple go away? How can it not? Okay. I'm going to put Leia View back. Keep this. All right. Does it have that problem still? Yes. Not the one I meant. Ugh. Can't aim today. Build. Okay, that error is gone. <laughs> we hope for good. Okay, so instead of this, we're going to put this ticker. Growth, label growth for each thing in assumptions. Okay, that should be fine. Now, let's build that. Okay. Now, can I say up here? Does that, that shouldn't, it doesn't use assumptions, so I don't see how it would be a problem. This might be Oh wait, no observable object. No? Okay. And we look at these growth none. Okay. Let's Oops. Let's 
Let's add an assumption. Okay. Now let's make this thing use it. Good. All right, now let's delete it. Okay. Now let's edit it. Right. Did we get any warnings? We should have. Selection SS1 is invalid. SS1 is invalid. Oh, yes, it was invalid. Okay. Right. Okay, I think I can work on addressing it now. Let's make growth default to assumption.none uh, flat. And let's take this out of here. Now in here, we only assign growth. We reassign growth. All right. Run. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, that's why it was SS1. Okay. No warning about purple stuff. Good. Now this, okay, it's ROI. Assumptions has no ROI because it reset itself. Um, and if I edit this, he turns it into none. If I don't update, it leaves it. But if I do, but, oh, that was selection of ROI is invalid. How does the picker have access to that? Wait a minute. Okay, when I come in, growth is flat growth. That's a valid name. Oh, 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 sorry. We haven't implemented assumptions.verified. Okay. <sighs> oh, okay. Assumptions.verified. We don't, we have a find. All right. Where the name equals. All right. So let's find uh, the assumptions. Oh, I wasn't consistent. And I guess I got two.
He'll complain eventually. I would hope. Okay, if I had one in present, I should get it back. And if I don't have it, I shouldn't. I don't know. You can do them one at a time. <laughs> Well, you know, look at Fume Apple. That's doing its thing. Okay. So we open people. We open plans. We don't open assumptions. Okay. We don't have a load yet. Yeah. Maybe we're going to need this was change thing. I don't know. Still building. Ugh. Oh, here we go. Should get a failing test. Second one. Okay, yeah, so this one does not replace it if it's if it's missing. So let's do this. Sorry, this. So it's really find name else. So. Well, I guess it's really find of name, then name, else, assumption, dot flat. Find of name is not now. Well, let's do it this way.
button. If we don't find the name, return flat growth, otherwise name. If I didn't do that backwards, it'll work. Okay. So, um... Okay, now we should see this work, I hope. All right, so assumptions, we just have the empty one. This should still have ROI. All right, we come in. We should not have an error, yeah. And it basically converts it. Now, if I update, it'll fix it. If I don't update, it goes back to what it was. Okay, not the best... Not the best at all, but that's... I guess good enough. Yeah, annoying. I guess it would be better. I mean, the thing is, we really are coupled to assumptions. And in effect, I'd be better off putting the IDs at runtime. I just don't know. Like, renaming these is really clunky at this point, right? You, you would have to know... Like, you can't put the, you could put the new name in and then change everything to it and then delete the old name. I guess that's what it is right now. Uh, clunky, clunky. All right. Um, and I don't know. I feel like at this point, if I have a workaround, then the, the, the functionality is there as a bare minimum. Um, Hopefully, well, if this is an important feature, we'll come back to it and make the rename work better. That's what I'm saying. Um, if we could rename and keep the same ID, even that might make that perfectly fine. Okay. Um, verify assumption name before picker. Okay, uh, let's do persistence on this thing, and that'll be pretty much a wrap today, unless this is a two-minute job. I don't think it is. All right, so Fume app, I lost again. Okay, so we, we have people, we have plans, but we don't have assumptions. Assumptions doesn't have a load method, so he really doesn't know what to do. Okay, so let's, oops. Well, this part is doable, so let's do it. Um, new assumptions equals this with assumptions. Okay. Now this 
Um, persistence. Let's add an assumptions volume. Um, Okay, so that will basically work. Um, well, what we can see, I mean, since we never heard of this name before, not surprisingly, it's not in there. Okay, so if we run... Okay, assumptions must conform to decodable. All right, and we know we don't have that on uh, assumption yet either. Hopefully that's the only problem. That message could be better, <laughs> but we know it's there. Okay, assumption type must be codable too. ID, UID, string, and identity. Okay, those are all good. Okay, let's try again. Ooh, immutable property will not be decoded. Um, well, people must have had this problem. Observable and codable. Oh, I didn't put coding keys in, did I? Faults. Oh, codable, you're right. Did I do that on all of them? Okay, well, <laughs> assumption codable, codable. Like, how am I supposed to know? And there's only one field. Immutable property will not be decoded. Clear with an initial value which cannot be overridden. And would it complain if that's not there? Assumptions is struck, just like people is a struct, person is a struct. <sighs> and struct. What am I missing? I don't even think I need that coding keys if I just take default fields. Immutable property. Oh, 
Oh, that's why I need the coding keys. Because um, being observable creates stuff. Oh, that's why they're underscored too. <laughs> All right. It creates extra fields and then overrides the existing fields um, with the, they, the real piece is the underlying va underscore value. I think this will do it. Okay, so um, the macro observable puts in the underscore value of underscore assumptions and then puts observer functions that are fields named assumptions and the codable thing doesn't know what to do with those. So that's why we're doing this. I get there eventually. All right, now this should run. What's the matter? Okay. This should run and it should create, it should attempt to open it and fail. I don't think we can stop at that blank line. Um, but we can look here. So theoretically, it opened it and created it if, if it was not loaded. Oh, maybe it is here. No. Yeah, we don't even have a save. So how would it? All right, so the, the fail is just default to empty um, on the open, but there is no save yet. So nobody ever writes that file. <laughs> All right. Um, so persistence covers that, but assumptions. Now, wait a minute. We don't have a load. We don't call it. No. People don't load new people. Wait a minute. I think I deleted something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's kind of important. Okay. So load. This is where we've been for our update this week, but normally we would just do these outer lines and I don't even know if we need the was changed. All right, so plans will do the equivalent. Um, the assumptions. And I don't know how we want to say. Um, I guess we're going to say load replaces assumptions. And I don't know, did we test the plans? Test load? Marked unchanged, okay. Okay, so let's create some assumptions. I probably do this somewhere, right?
And we expect if we do uh, sut dot find of the one not equal null. Okay, so if we, yeah, we'll create an assumptions, we throw it into that list, we create another assumptions, we load it from the first one, then we better find it in the second one. Okay. Okay, empty load should fail. Okay, and it came up nil, yep. All right. Now the load is gonna look exactly like this one. Not even, we don't have was changed yet, so we'll see. That should pass. Good, okay. And then we want to call it up here. Okay. So we still have no save. <laughs> but hopefully it does not blow up on the load and it's just got the default set. Okay. Good. All right, and then save. Um, I don't even think we have to, we just have to do the, con the content view, not a content view. Okay, so I don't, I don't know why we don't have to just say a uh, plant change of assumptions we may have to introduce the was changed to make things right, but um, I'm going to not worry about that. Okay. One change of assumptions. We need our environment. Oh, well, we should do the same way.
Okay, we have assumptions there. Instance method on change requires consumptions conform to equatable. Well, that's probably why we're tracking that was changed flag. Um. So. Well, let's look at plans. So was changed as false to after load. Let's um, get our assumptions. We defaulted. Oh, was false. Well, I guess we want to mark it changed and then validate it. Assumptions, assumptions. Oh. Well, what variable is not being said? Start date, people, po oh. Checking plans was changed in assumptions. Thank you. Golly. And I'm only intended to test that part manually, so that's really good to have fixed. <laughs> um, this plans. Oh, meant to run tests, but okay. 
All right, so assumptions comes in with nothing. Right, yeah, let's get our tests straight first. Okay, so assumptions, does this test pass? I don't think he will. Uh, this one. Good. Not true. Okay, so load should clear it. All right, add should change it, remove should change it. Well, replace will by default, I guess. Add, remove. I assume we tested add, yes. Hmm, what's this last one? Remove. We did not test. Okay, he needs the same kind of setup as this. Okay, so I'm making several at once. No, that's not really necessarily the best way to do things. And I probably should repeat that true stuff. Okay, good, good, good. But let me just to make sure it's happening for the right reason, I guess this should move up.
Okay, the load should pass. The other should fail. Oh no. Okay, that one should fail. Yeah, so the add, the remove, the replace all failed. That one passed. All right. So. It is true. And I mean, I could default it off there, but I just want to be explicit. Okay. Okay, now let's go back to content view. We load the thing, if assumptions was changed, if it, if it changed to false, then just skip it. If it changed, then change it back to set it to false and do the save. Okay. So let's run. I'll probably fix those offline, those, those long lines. I think I'll create a little helper constructor. Okay, so we have one assumption. Let's add it. Okay, before I hit create, let's go look. Okay, now hit create. Okay, it's there. And, oh, not there. Well, sorry, let's look at this. Assumptions, sorry, was changed, starts false. Load clears it, add, remove and replace, set it. So why did he not trigger? Content view. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm gonna stay on for a few minutes and see if we can knock this out. I'm sure it's something very simple. All right, so where's... Here's our save, persistence, sorry. I think that was, did I revert it or something? <laughs> okay, add ROI. Um, let's go find the directory. Okay, hit create. Uh oh. Oh, breakpoint. Continue. Okay. Okay. Yay. 
That's a lot of assumption. Changed false plants. Oh, thank you. I don't know how I can see one and not see the other. All right. And ROI. Create. Go to the right directory. That looks better. Current zero, min, min, zero, max, zero percent. It's got an ID. Min one has 50, and its name is ROI. Okay. Woohoo. <laughs> All right. Uh, slightly over budget on time, but I think we have that working. Um, we don't do anything with them except we validate that they're there and, and all that stuff. Um, that'll be at least a fodder for a good discussion. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Why are you? Well, let me add that too. All right. So, um, does it load? Well, that's a good question. All right, let's run it again. Probably withdraw my, my woohoo temporarily. Okay, have two things in there, please. Yes. Okay. Yes, it does. <laughs> All right. Um, well, we'll be back next week, Monday through Thursday, I think. I don't think I have anything going on the rest of the month, uh, travel-wise. So Monday through Thursday, 2 to 4.30 Eastern, 6 to 8.30 p.m. UTC. Um, thank you, Mudshark. Um, <laughs> I'd probably be staring at those plans for hours, not noticing that they're not assumptions. All right, and uh, next week we will focus on uh, making interest rates earn you interest. I think that'll be fun. All right, so I think it'll be a good week next week as far as assumptions and uh, uh, closing in on some. That's kind of a big piece, so I'm glad to be glad to be tackling that. Uh, like I said, I'll clean these up over the weekend, and I guess I'll clean this to-do stuff up too. All right, well, take care and catch you next time. Hope. Bye-bye.